Hello and welcome to this video on Kirchhoff's voltage law. We're going to look in this video in a little bit more detail at how voltages behave in simple circuits. And in a previous video, we looked at this briefly in how voltages can be shared out amongst resistances in a circuit. So let's label some of the components that I have in this simple circuit here. I've got this uh, battery, uh, I'll label it VS, the supply voltage. And I've got two resistors in series, R1 and R2. And what we'll find, let, let's say that this battery is a 9 volt battery, so I'll, I'll give it a value there. But what we'll find is that when we measure the voltages across either of these two resistors, we're going to get uh, only a fraction of the supply voltage. So let's say if I have a voltmeter here and I was to measure the voltage just across, R, uh, across R1, so we'll call that V1, it'll not be 9 volts, it'll only be some of that 9 volts. And likewise, if I was to measure the voltage V2 across resistor R2, I would only be seeing a fraction of that 9 volts. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at, in a moment, at something called the potential divider rule. The rule that we can use to split up that 9 volts and share it out correctly amongst the resistors in the circuit. Before we do that though, I want to have a look at the wording of Kirchhoff's voltage law. So Kirchhoff's voltage law is written there at the top and it says that the voltage supplied is equal to the sum of the voltages dropped. Now by the word sum, we mean the total of. So the total of the voltages dropped or the total of the voltages used in the circuit. So what it's saying is that the voltage supplied, i.e. in this case 9 volts, should be equal to the total of the voltages used in the circuit or, or the, the voltages dropped across these resistors. So what I'm expecting, if I was to write this in formula form, is that Vs should be equal to V1 plus V2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put that into practice here by using the potential divider rule. And the potential divider rule looks like this. It's V1 equals Vs, the supply voltage, multiplied by a fraction. Now, on the top of that fraction, I'm putting whichever resistor I'm measuring across. So V1, again, if we imagine that that was a voltmeter, I'm measuring across R1. And so in this case, I should be putting R1 on the top of my fraction. On the bottom of the fraction, I'm going to put both resistances added together. So R1 plus R2. And likewise, if I wanted to calculate V2, I would simply have Vs again multiplied by a fraction. But this time, because I'm measuring across R2, I would put R2 on the top. And again, I would have R1 plus R2 on the bottom. So, what I'll do is I'll get rid of what we've got here um, because what I would rather do is put some values into our examples here and calculate some uh, voltages in this circuit. So before I can do that, I've got to give some values to my components. So let's say that R1 is 20 ohms. And let's say that R2 is 10 ohms. So let's put this into practice now. We can say that R1, uh, sorry, V1 is Vs, which in this case is 9, multiplied by a fraction. And on the top of that fraction, I'm measuring across R1, which is the 20 ohm resistor. So 20 goes on the top. And on the bottom, both of those resistors added together 20 plus 10. Now, what I get when I calculate that is a total of 6 volts. So 6 volts is the voltage that I'm measuring across um, R1 there. Now, if we look at the wording of Kirchhoff's voltage law, we might be able to guess what V2 is without even having to calculate it, because the voltage supplied is equal to the sum of the voltages dropped. So I'm dropping a total of 
9 volts here and one of them is 6 volts so the remainder must be 3 volts but we'll apply the potential divider rule anyway and we should hope to get that as an answer so again V2 is Vs which is 9 multiplied by a fraction and on the top of the fraction this time I'm measuring across R2 the 10 ohms resistor so I want to put 10 on the top and 20 plus 10 on the bottom and when we calculate that I get an answer of 3 volts and so what we find here is that the voltage has dropped i.e. the voltages uh, across the two separate components are equal to the voltage supplied 9 volts so the Kirchhoff's voltage law is correct in this instance let's look now at a slightly more difficult example so we have a circuit now that has a series element R1 and also has a parallel element R2 and R3 are both in parallel and I want to do the same thing again here I want to split the supply voltage into separate voltages now because R2 and R3 are in parallel they're actually going to share the same voltage and so what I can do is I can make my life a bit easier by simplifying this circuit what I want to do is I'm going to combine R2 and R3 in parallel we're going to combine them into one resistance and in a previous video on series and parallel resistors we looked in a bit more detail at how we do this but just very quickly here we're going to try and simplify this circuit but before anything else we need some circuit values so let's say VS the battery there is a 12 volt battery and let's say that R1 is 220 ohms we'll say that R2 is 330 ohms and we'll say that R3 is 470 ohms and what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the circuit first of all before we do anything else and then hopefully the potential divider rule will be a little bit easier so resistors in parallel we know is the formula 1 over RT equals 1 over 330 plus 1 over 470 and if I calculate that and rearrange the formula I'll get RT the total resistance being a value of 193.88 ohms now if you're not sure about that calculation I suggest going back to the video on series and parallel resistors where we had a little bit more practice with that but what we can now do is we can redraw this circuit because we can say that um, rather than having R2 and R3 here these separate resistors what I can do is I can take these out so in fact I'll do that I'll I'll remove these from the uh, the circuit here and I'm going to replace them with one resistance which is my combined resistance that I've just calculated so what I want to do is I want to put that in place there and we're going to say that that is the equivalent of a 193.88 ohm resistor I might write that again a little bit neater 193.88 ohms and what I want to do is I'm going to call that R2 slash 3 because that's my combination of R2 and R3 now because I've done this I've now really what I've done is I've simplified this circuit to the point where it's very similar to our previous example in fact we've got a supply voltage here and we've got two resistances in series and so what we can do is we can calculate a V1 the voltage across the the first resistor R1 and I can calculate what I'm going to call V2 slash 3 the voltage across R2 slash 3 and we're going to do that in the same manner as we did before we're going to use the potential divider rule so using the same method as before we're going to say that V1 is equal to Vs 
which in our case is 12, multiplied by a fraction. And on the top of that fraction, I'm going to say that we're measuring across R1, the 220 ohm resistor. So 220 goes on the top. On the bottom of the fraction, I have both of my resistances added together. So 220 plus 193.88. And when I calculate that in my calculator, I get an answer of 6.38 volts. So 6.38 is our value for V1. We're going to repeat this now for V2 slash 3. So following the same method again, uh, Vs, 12, multiplied by a fraction. This time on the top of my fraction, I'm putting the resistance I'm measuring across, which in this case is 193.88. And on the bottom of the fraction, I'm putting those same two resistances added together, 220 plus 193.88. And in this case, I get an answer of 5.62 volts. So V1 and V2 slash 3 have been calculated there. 5.62 volts. Now we could revert back to the original uh, the original circuit and what we find is that 5.62 volts is across both resistor 2 and resistor 3. They're both in parallel and so they both get the same voltage. So that's why I've called it V2 slash 3 in this instance, because it applies as V2 and it applies as V3. One last thing you might notice is that that 6.38 and that 5.62, again, following Kirchhoff's voltage law, should add up to our supply voltage, which they do. They add up to 12 volts there. So I hope you found this video on Kirchhoff's voltage law useful. Thanks for watching.